Another supposed proof often offered up by globe debaters involves alleged time and path issues with long-haul southern hemisphere flights. For example, the direct flight route from Sydney, Australia to Santiago, Chile takes an average of only 13 hours to reach its destination, a duration which globe earthers claim is impossible over a flat earth. They say that since the Sydney to Santiago flights with U.S. stopovers take twice as long to reach their destinations as the non-stop flights, that this proves the direct flights are not traversing the U.S. and could not be completed so quickly over a flat Earth. As with all globe arguments, however, this hasty conclusion does not follow from their spurious reasoning. To begin with, if Earth were truly a sphere, the shortest route for all such flights would be a straight line over Antarctica. If this flight path was actually possible, it would cut off many hours and many hundred miles, but pilots are given the excuse that Antarctica is too cold to fly over, so not a single plane actually takes the shortest, fastest route over a spherical Earth. Now even conceding this point, if Earth were truly a sphere, then the second shortest route for all such flights would be a straight shot due east or west over the Pacific, staying in the southern hemisphere for the entire flight. Refueling could even be done in New Zealand or other southern hemisphere destinations along the way, if necessary. In reality, however, 99% of Santiago to Sydney and other long-haul southern hemisphere flights admittedly cross the equator twice going high into the Northern Hemisphere, making stopovers at LAX and other North American airports before continuing back down to the Southern Hemisphere. Here are a few more examples. On a globe, Santiago, Chile to Johannesburg, South Africa should be an easy flight, all taking place below the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere. Yet every listed flight makes a curious refueling stop in Senegal near the Tropic of Cancer, in the Northern Hemisphere first. When mapped on a flat Earth, the reason why is clear to see, however, because Senegal is actually directly in a straight-line path halfway between the two. On a globe, Johannesburg, South Africa, to Sao Paulo, Brazil, should be a quick, straight shot over the Atlantic along the 25th Southern Latitude, but instead, nearly every flight makes a refueling stop at the 50th degree north latitude in London first. On a globe, Johannesburg, South Africa, to Perth, Australia, should be a straight shot over the Indian Ocean, with convenient refueling possibilities on Mauritius or Madagascar. But in actual practice, most Johannesburg to Perth flights curiously stop over in either Dubai, Hong Kong, or Malaysia. On a globe, Cape Town, South Africa, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, should be a straight shot over the Atlantic, following the same line of latitude across. But instead, every flight goes to connecting locations in the Northern Hemisphere first, stopping over anywhere from London to Turkey to Dubai. Such ridiculously wayward detours as these make no sense on the globe, but make perfect sense and form nearly straight lines when shown on a flat Earth map. As for the Sydney to Santiago direct flight, data from Google Flights cites an average duration of 13 hours and 22 minutes, with data from Google Earth citing a total distance between the two of 7,063 miles. Dividing 7,063 miles by 13.3 hours gives a necessary average flight speed of 531 miles per hour, which according to Google Search is just below the 540 mile per hour average flight speed of commercial airliners. In other words, not only are such flights easily possible over a flat Earth, but they also take exactly the amount of time expected. Some globe debaters will acknowledge this fact, but rebut with the claim that non-stop Sydney to Santiago flights follow a great circle route over the Pacific, remaining in the southern hemisphere the entire time therefore increasing the necessary flight distance, speed, and duration. With regards to this claim, 
Firstly, it has yet to be proven that these flights even exist, since no unedited video footage exists online, and every time Flat Earthers have attempted to book the non-stop flight, it fails to go through, gets cancelled and refunded days before departure, or changes to a non-direct flight. Secondly, if they do exist, it is yet to be proven that these flights follow such a path, because again, there is no unedited video footage, flight trackers cut out over the oceans, and it is highly unlikely, considering 99% of other long-haul southern hemisphere flights take radical northern detours. Even conceding all of the above, however, there is still no reason that such flights would be impossible over a flat earth. 540 miles per hour is the average commercial airline speed, but most Convairs and Boeings have the capability of traveling much faster, especially during such long-haul flights, upwards of 6 to 800 miles per hour. The Concorde commercial airliner actually had a maximum flight speed of a whopping 1,480 miles per hour. Furthermore, trade winds and jet streams exist, which pilots regularly take advantage of, that can boost airspeed up to an extra 200 miles per hour. Therefore, even if such a flight exists, and travels non-stop the exact route globe debaters claim, by simply speeding up and taking advantage of trade winds and jet streams, planes would still be perfectly able to reach their destination, on time, over a flat earth.